Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. Bigfoot's behavior and characteristics imply that it is an ape or hominid, and not a tool user like humans or human ancestors, which are hominin. This begs the question, which ape did Bigfoot come from? Gigantopithecus gets all the press because of its immense size, but I'm not convinced. That's like saying squirrel came from ferrets because they are roughly the same shape, while in reality, a chipmunk is a much better analog because of its dentition and skeletal morphology, not size. The best candidate for Bigfoot is, in my opinion, a very special genus of supposedly extinct ape known as Dryopithecus. I want to immediately note that, like all apes, Dryopithecus remains are incredibly rare, so all illustrations rely heavily on preconceived notions of living apes. That being said, the first remains of Dryopithecus date back to about 20 million years ago, the most recent Dryopithecus remains are only about 3 million years old, so it is relatively new on the scene. Dryopithecus was prolific. Only a handful of Dryopithecus fossils have ever been found, but they were recovered over a huge range. France, Southeast Africa, Mongolia, and Hungary. And just because the last fossil of Dryo is 3 million years old, does not mean that they went extinct 3 million years ago. That is simply the last fossil we have found. Apes have long been notorious for how little fossil evidence they leave. And there are many parallels between what we colloquially call Bigfoot and Dryopithecus. Dryopithecus literally means oak ape, because its habitat was hardwood forests. The earliest remnants of the genus Dryopithecus portray individuals the size of lemurs. The more recent finds, only a few million years old, portray an ape that is somewhere between a bonobo and a mountain gorilla. So it is important to understand that Dryo size increased during its entire time on Earth. So an ape that was the size of a gorilla and growing seems like a promising Bigfoot contender. There are also minute anthropological morphologies which make Dryo a likely candidate. Compared to other apes that lived alongside Dryopithecus and apes today, Dryo had proportionately very short limbs. A fully grown mountain gorilla has an upright, unnaturally stretched height of 5.75 feet and an arm span of 8 feet. This means its ape index, or arm length to height ratio, is 1 to 0.4, meaning its height is only 60% as tall as its arms are long. A human's ape index, or arm length to height ratio, is 1 to 1. As gloriously represented by Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, your arm span is as long as you are tall. The fact that the gorilla's height is so significantly less than its arm span is indicative of it being a quadruped, while a human's arm span, being equal to its height, is indicative of it being a biped. The fossil record is not clear enough to say exactly what Dryopithecine's height to arm length ratio is, but it can be determined that Dryo's arm span was only a little bit longer than its height, probably 1 to 0.8, which on the ape index spectrum is closer to a human at 1 to 1 than a gorilla at 1 to 0.4. So Dryo was between a man and an ape, only a little closer to man, which sounds familiar. Primitive monkeys, like gibbons, have arms almost three times the length of their body. So for Dryopithecus, as of 15 million years ago, to have almost human proportions is extremely unique. Similar arm length to height ratio is not the only trait that this ape shares with people. Dryopithecines also had a gracile jaw. Humans have gracile jaws. A gracile, or a slighter, more slender jaw, indicates a varied diet ranging from fruit, bird eggs, mollusks, and flesh. Other apes that lived alongside Dryopithecus had robust jaws, jaws that were made from monotonous chomping on bamboo or nuts for hours every day. This suggests to me that Dryo was unique among its ape contemporaries in that it was a generalist. Generalists are also by definition opportunists, which takes intelligence. Dryopithecus spent time thinking, learning, and adapting, changing its daily routine in order to reflect its environment unlike, say, Gigantopithecus, which only ate bamboo. I should also note that thin enamel on Dryo's molars also reflect a varied omnivorous diet. It is very important to understand that early Australopithecines, which are human ancestors, had gracile jaws as well. It is a very human trait. And Dryo never went on to contribute to human lineage. And this is what is so fascinating. Dryopithecus is a human-sized ape that was uniquely adapting to be human-like but not become human. This is called convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is when two totally different animals adapt to become similar, but not the same. The easiest example is the gray wolf and the hyena. Both are apex predators. Both are pack hunters, around 100 pounds, 
and both prey on animals much larger than themselves, using coordinated effort. Yet the gray wolf is of dog lineage, and the hyena is much closer to the weasel family. They have strikingly similar morphologies and behavior because they fill the same ecological role or niche, they just arrive there differently. And as the hyena began to think like a wolf, Dryo began to think like a man, giving this ape unprecedented intelligence and self-awareness. Does this mean that Homo sapiens' role on this planet is rivaled? No. Not the planet. Just some forests. Dryopithecus is a man-sized ape that had human characteristics as early as humans had these characteristics. So this ape has evolved to be human-like before modern humans even existed. And it never contributed to human lineage. Humans and human ancestors certainly didn't die off three million years ago. So why do we think Dryopithecus went extinct three million years ago? Because the meager fossil record ran out? Ape fossils are always few and far between. While we wait for the fossil record to grow, I think it is worth pinning Dryo up against Giganto, a more typical ape, as a Bigfoot contender. Giganto lived in a relatively localized area of Southeast Asia. Dryo lived on at least three continents. Africa, Europe, Asia, and they probably made it to Alaska, but no one ever looks there. Giganto lived in bamboo forests. Dryo thrived in hardwood forests. Giganto's robusticity and mandibular alignment suggest it was a quadruped. Dryo's arm length height ratio suggests it was upright at least part of the time. Giganto was a specialist. It ate nothing but bamboo. Dryo was a generalist. It would have ate anything it could figure out how to crack, open, or catch. I have devoted a lot of time, money, and dedication trying to figure out just what this is. I do not have nearly enough academic clout to publish these kind of assertions. But really, nothing here is so unreasonable. The billy ape is the largest member of the chimpanzee family, and it was only verified in 2003. Dryopithecus fits the timeline and the description for something that is still reported today. An ape which began to adapt like a human, but went on to be something else entirely. If Bigfoot is a flesh-and-blood creature, then Dryo seems to be the best starting point. But I could be wrong. Let me know what you think Bigfoot is. Like and subscribe. And thanks an awful lot for listening.